It was an ordinary, mundane day in my calculus class, a subject that seldom elicited excitement. However, it was a Friday afternoon, seventh period, and the promise of spring break hung tantalizingly close, infusing our classroom with restless anticipation. The air was charged with a collective itch to escape our mundane routines. Our teacher, usually laid back, seemed to sense our yearning for reprieve. In the middle of class, he decided to deviate from the norm and engage us in a game on SparkleCal, a momentary respite from the rigors of calculus. We were engrossed in a brand logo quiz, minds drifting toward the impending break. Then, it happened. A sudden, spine-tingling jolt of reality that shattered our complacency. The dean's voice crackled through the loudspeaker, raw with panic and urgency. He announced that it was not a drill, and all teachers were instructed to initiate lockdown procedures. Chilled to the bone, goosebumps prickling my skin, I exchanged wide-eyed glances with my classmates. The eerie silence that enveloped the room was broken only by the clattering of keys as our teacher hurriedly switched off the lights, his anxiety palpable. We were hastily ushered to the back corner of the classroom, our hearts pounding in trepidation. Two excruciating minutes passed, the buzzing of the panel in the rear of the room ominously fading into silence. It was then that we collectively understood that the school had severed all power, plunging us into a shroud of darkness. In that suffocating stillness, we strained to hear the ominous voice of a man, distant yet rapidly approaching. His frenzied screams sliced through the air, paralyzing us with dread. As the cacophonous wails drew nearer, two girls in the class succumbed to their terror, tears streaming down their faces. Fear became a tangible presence, coiling around our hearts. The man's raucous cries evolved into ear-splitting screams that reverberated off the walls. He pounded on lockers, each strike a chilling testament to his madness. The words that spilled from his lips curdled our blood. I'll kill all of you, he shrieked, punctuating his threats with frenetic bangs on the lockers. My heart felt as though it might rupture from the sheer terror coursing through my veins. Our teacher silenced us with a desperate hush, eyes wide with his own apprehension. The relentless pounding migrated from the lockers to our classroom door. Panic reached its zenith as one of the sobbing girls let out a heart-wrenching cry of despair. No! she screamed, but it was drowned out by the madman's relentless assault on our sanctuary. The door vibrated with each ferocious blow, and dread held us captive, our gazes locked in mutual terror. The minutes stretched into an agonizing eternity as the man continued his frenzied attack. Finally, as suddenly as the nightmare began, the pounding ceased and the lunatic's deranged screams receded down the hallway. An air of suffocating relief washed over us, but unease lingered like a stubborn specter. It felt like an eternity had passed before the madman's presence faded entirely and we could breathe again. What felt like an eternity later, the dean's voice crackled through the loudspeaker once more. He offered an unsettling explanation for the chaos that had befallen our school. A mentally unstable intruder had breached the building, assaulting the woman at the front desk, causing her to flee in terror. The staff, grappling with limited security measures and a dearth of surveillance, scoured hallways and classrooms in vain pursuit of the intruder. The dean's instructions to our teachers were clear. Resume classes, but maintain locked doors, and under no circumstances were students to leave. The most disconcerting revelation, however, was the subsequent rumor that circulated among us students. It suggested that the janitor working the night shift had stumbled upon the intruder who lay asleep in one of the storage closets, ominously clutching a 44 Magnum in his pocket. The janitor's actions, whether accidental or ill-conceived, roused the intruder from his slumber. By the time a police officer arrived on the scene, the intruder had vanished into the obscurity of the night, leaving us with unanswered questions and lingering fear. To this day, my classmates and I remain uncertain whether the madman was ever apprehended. In my hopeful imagination, I envision him receiving the help he so desperately needs. 
Nonetheless, the chilling memory of that harrowing day serves as a grim reminder of the darkness that can intrude upon even the most ordinary of moments. It was a dreary and mundane Friday afternoon during my junior year of high school. I was 16, enduring the long school day, counting down the minutes until spring break would grant us respite from the monotony. Fifth period was lunch, and right after, I had my astronomy class. Our school was quite large, with three floors struggling to accommodate all the classes. To cope with the shortage of space, they had converted two basement rooms into classrooms. These basements, we nicknamed the chamber, were eerie when deserted. Our teacher that day was laid back, and instead of conducting a formal class, he decided to engage us in a quiz using Sparkle, an online learning platform. Typically, I breezed through the material, finishing early. Bored, I texted my friend in the other basement classroom, suggesting we meet in the bathroom, which was conveniently located nearby. As we weren't having a test that day, my friend Stephen and I decided to leave our classrooms unnoticed. The lights in the hallways were usually kept on during lockdowns, but that day, we were met with complete darkness. It seemed unusual, but curiosity got the better of us, and we ventured out to explore the shadowy corridors. Stephen took a few steps forward, and I followed suit. As we ventured deeper into the gloom, a sense of foreboding crept over us. Suddenly, we noticed a figure emerging from the pitch-black void. Panic gripped us as we realized this person was not dressed like a teacher or a student. He looked like a vagrant, and a disheveled one at that. Alarmed, we decided to retreat, but it was too late. The man spotted us, and fear surged through our veins as we hurried back to the basement. He had seen us. We silently entered the basement bathroom, turned off the lights, and hid in a corner stall, hoping he hadn't identified us. As we cowered in the darkness, an eerie silence enveloped us, punctuated only by the occasional drip from the sink. Suddenly, the bathroom door creaked open, and a shaft of light pierced the obscurity. We held our breath as the door shut, plunging us into darkness once more. The intruder's heavy breathing filled the room as he approached. Tension mounted as he stopped near our stall, his labored breath sending shivers down our spines. The room was so silent that even our shallow breaths seemed deafening. Then, in a chilling moment, he whispered something, confirming our presence. Panic coursed through us as he tried to open the stall door. In our pitch-black hiding spot, we decided to make a move. We crawled through adjacent stalls, desperately trying to evade discovery. Each movement was excruciatingly slow, our hearts pounding in our chests. Finally, we emerged on the other side of the bathroom, concealed by the darkness. The intruder continued to bang on the stall door, growing increasingly frustrated. Stephen's hushed whisper had nearly betrayed us, but we had to keep moving. We watched in silence as he pounded on the door. Eventually, he retreated, leaving the bathroom. We waited a while longer, unsure of whether he had truly left. Then, seizing the opportunity, we bolted from the bathroom and into Stephen's classroom, where our classmates had already locked themselves in. Our teacher, baffled by our panicked entry, was told about the man upstairs. It was then that we learned he had been wielding a gun. As we waited inside the locked classroom, dread enveloped us. We couldn't be sure if he had left the building entirely. Our teacher kept us updated, assuring us that the school was on lockdown and that the authorities were involved. It felt like an eternity before we were given the all-clear to leave the room. We recounted the incident to the police and school authorities, describing the man to the best of our ability. The school promptly beefed up security, installing cameras and ramping up safety measures. Yet we never learned what became of the intruder. To this day, I am convinced that his intentions were nothing short of murderous. One of the most harrowing days of my life began just like any other. I had settled into my history class, preparing to dive into the world of textbooks and lectures. Little did I know that the ordinary facade of the day would crumble into a nightmare. 
The abrupt and chilling announcement over the intercom pierced the air, and Principal Mr. Roberts' voice quivered with fear. He declared a school-wide lockdown, urging us to barricade ourselves inside our classrooms. It was abundantly clear that this was no mere drill. The classroom fell into a stunned silence, pupils wide with terror. The shock washed over us before morphing into a frantic sense of urgency. Our teacher, Mr. John, sprang into action, securing the door. Emily, a fellow student, flicked off the lights, cloaking us in darkness. Several brave boys combined their strength, shoving desks and chairs against the door, rendering it nearly impenetrable. We huddled together in the rear of the room, our hushed breaths and pounding hearts the only sounds. The fear hung in the air, palpable and stifling. We had no inkling of who lurked outside, or what horrors they might unleash upon us. Desperation compelled me to text my friends in other classrooms, praying they were safe. The replies were scarce, shrouded in uncertainty, just like our own fate. Then, Mr. Roberts' voice crackled over the intercom, delivering a bone-chilling message. Two convicts had escaped from the local prison and sought refuge within our school's walls. They were no ordinary criminals, their records were marred by gruesome acts. The ominous twist was that they were armed, each clutching a knife with malevolent intent. Our terror deepened, shattering the remnants of our fragile courage. We braced ourselves, hoping against hope that we would survive this ordeal unscathed. Time crawled by, each minute an eternity of torment. There was nothing but the agonizing silence, punctuated by our quickened breaths and racing thoughts. And then it happened. A scream, blood-curdling and filled with despair, echoed from the hallway. It was a voice unfamiliar to Us, a young girl's plea tingled with raw terror. She begged and bargained, beseeching her captor for mercy. The classroom shuddered with fear, and I longed to cover my ears, to escape the nightmarish reality unfolding outside our fragile sanctuary. A deafening bang ripped through the silence, and then... nothing. The oppressive quiet hung like a suffocating shroud. None of us dared to speak or move, our dread anchoring us to the cold classroom floor. An eternity of silence passed before Mr. Robert's voice finally broke it. His tone was a mixture of relief and grimness as he informed us that the school had been secured. It was safe to leave, to venture back into a world forever changed. In the parking lot, Waiting parents clung to their cars, their faces etched with fear and worry. The convicts' daring escape had made headlines and frantic parents had rushed to retrieve their children. News reports later revealed the chilling truth. The convicts had cornered a helpless girl hiding in the bathroom. The harrowing screams we had heard were hers, pleading for mercy and escape. The standoff reached its climax when the SWAT team arrived shattering the deadlock. One of the convicts surrendered, discarding his weapon and stepping back from the terrified girl. The other remained defiant, meeting his end in a hail of gunfire. Handcuffed and defeated, he was returned to the confines of custody. Miraculously, no one was physically harmed that day, but the mental scars ran deep. The traumatized girl who had endured the convict's torment would forever carry the burden of that fateful lockdown, and none of us, trapped in the suffocating darkness, would ever forget the indelible mark it left on our souls. I attended a rundown high school in a neighborhood that had seen better days. Our regular routine included fire drills and lockdown drills, which were necessary precautions given the environment. During lockdown drills, the lights were turned off, and we would all huddle in a corner, staying silent and praying that nothing sinister would ever occur. One chilly day in the heart of the school year, during the third quarter, an eerie incident unfolded. Although the windows were closed, an unsettling commotion echoed through the corridors, interrupting our teacher mid-sentence. His eyes darted to the window, and he opened it slightly. The shouting outside grew louder, but the tumult subsided just as he reached the window. We all listened in anxious silence. As we grappled with the unsettling atmosphere, the dean's voice pierced the stillness over the loudspeaker, announcing an immediate lockdown. 
Our teacher hurriedly locked the classroom door and switched off the lights, and we instinctively congregated in the corner. Time seemed to slow down as fear gripped our hearts. Then, chilling screams erupted from the hallway. These were not the voices of fellow students. They were the demented and enraged shouts of a grown man. His sinister presence mirrored the earlier disturbance from outside, signaling that someone dangerous had infiltrated our school. Without security guards due to the school's limited resources, we were left to wait for the police to arrive. The man's unhinged screams grew louder, and it wasn't the familiar sound of a student's voice. Instead, it was the deranged fury of an adult. The screams were then followed by the ominous sound of pounding on a nearby classroom door coming closer with every deafening thud. The terror of the students in that neighboring room was palpably, their cries piercing the air. The relentless pounding ceased, only to resume outside our classroom door. The man's frenzied attacks on the sturdy door filled the room with dread. He hit the door with such force that it reverberated through the classroom. Panic engulfed us, and some students began to sob and scream. The madman's actions grew even more violent, his screams becoming incoherent. It was as though he was possessed by an otherworldly rage, a menace we could not comprehend. Some of the students couldn't bear it any longer and begged for the torment to stop. Then, a bone-chilling sound echoed through the room, the shattering of the small, thin glass window in our classroom door. The gruesome reality of our situation intensified as shards of glass rained down. The cries and screams of my fellow students reached a crescendo, filling the room with chaos and despair. Amid the turmoil, I sat in stunned silence, unable to comprehend the nightmare unfolding before me. The man on the other side of the door, driven by madness, continued his relentless assault. His arm thrust through the shattered window, attempting to unlock the door and gain entry to our sanctuary. In a desperate bid to defend us, our teacher seized a pair of scissors and plunged them into the man's arm. A guttural cry of pain and rage erupted from the assailant as he withdrew his arm, blood trickling from the wound. He hammered on the door a few more times, with even greater force before his footsteps echoed down the hallway, his anguished cries echoing into the distance. Eventually, the lockdown was lifted, and relief washed over us as the police arrived in full force, their presence a welcome sight. At least six patrol cars were stationed outside our beleaguered school. The deranged man was apprehended, likely destined for a mental institution. It later emerged that he was unarmed, but his sinister intentions were unmistakable. He had entered our school with malevolent designs, leaving us scarred by the chilling encounter. The memory of that day haunted us, a reminder that even in the most unexpected places, darkness can descend and ordinary lives can be forever altered by fear. In the year 2009, I found myself in the midst of my junior year in high school and on an ordinary day, a peculiar and unsettling incident unfolded during an English class that would haunt me for years to come. As the school year was winding down, our class was diligently working on final projects, a precursor to the much-awaited summer break. These projects required the use of school laptops, but the library, our usual go-to spot, was temporarily inaccessible due to ongoing repairs or renovations. The details escape me now. With a pressing urge to use the laptops, I volunteered to fetch them from the back room of the library after a quick pit stop at the bathroom. Upon entering the dimly lit library, I immediately sensed an eerie stillness in the air. It appeared deserted, with no signs of life. My destination, the laptop carts, was situated deep in the library, in a separate room. A glass window separated this room from the library's main area, shrouding it in an unsettling darkness. Upon reaching the door to the back room, I attempted to turn the handle, but it stubbornly refused to budge. My unease grew as I contemplated my next course of action. I didn't fancy returning to the classroom empty-handed. Casting a hopeful glance around the library, I hoped to spot a staff member who could assist me. However, the library seemed utterly deserted. Intriguingly, I detected faint sounds emanating from the far corner of the library. 
A consistent, rhythmic, clicking noise tickled my ears, drawing my curiosity. It appeared to originate from one of the study rooms, often used for classes. The room's door was slightly ajar, but darkness shrouded its interior. These study rooms featured windows that allowed outsiders to peer inside, and I cautiously approached one such window to gain a glimpse of the source of the peculiar noise. Squinting through the glass, I was almost certain I discerned a human figure in the room's far corner. Summoning my courage, I gently pushed the door open and called out. My voice echoed eerily within the silent room. A sense of foreboding washed over me as I tried the light switch, only to discover that the power in the library had been cut. I stepped further into the room, anxious to confirm the presence of the person. However, as my eyes adjusted to the darkness, what I initially perceived as a humanoid figure took on an increasingly sinister and grotesque appearance. The vague, amorphous shape was now a looming presence, unnaturally tall, with a head that dwarfed any humans. It was at least seven to eight feet tall, and terror coiled around me like a vice. Despite the absence of illumination, I sensed that this entity was looking directly at me. Its oversized head harbored a face that was an aberration of human features. An oppressive and malevolent atmosphere enveloped the room. Panic began to creep into my bones, paralyzing me. I knew, deep down, that this was no ordinary being. It was something beyond comprehension. Frozen in terror, I couldn't tear my gaze away, and it felt as if an eternity passed in that agonizing moment. Abruptly, a movement within the shadowy corner of the room shattered my trance, and my instinct screamed at me to flee. I bolted out of the room and raced out of the library, my heart pounding wildly and my breath coming in frantic gasps. Outside, the world appeared to have transformed. A teacher named Miss Carp, whom I recognized from the school's halls, was walking by. My voice trembled as I implored her to follow me into the library and witness the inexplicable sight. Miss Carp's stern voice chided me for entering the library during the off-limits week. She was annoyed by my disobedience, her skepticism apparent. Ignoring her reluctance, I led her to the library, determined to reveal the enigma that had unfolded within. To my shock, as we entered the library, the once dark back room was now illuminated. The light had inexplicably returned, dispelling any trace of the monstrous presence that had terrified me moments ago. Miss Carp's patience wore thin, and she dismissed my account as a mere hallucination. Returning to class with the laptop cart, I concealed the inexplicable incident. I feared the ridicule that awaited if I were to share my encounter with others, my credibility tarnished. To this day, I remain uncertain about the nature of the malevolent entity that lurked within the shadows of that forsaken library room. It defied rationality, a chilling encounter that defied explanation, and a memory that continues to haunt my nightmares. It was an ordinary day, just like any other in my junior year of high school. I had just heard the bell ring, signaling the start of another class. Art class was my destination, but it was located at the far end of the school, so I quickened my pace to avoid being tardy. Little did I know that this seemingly ordinary day would soon turn into a harrowing nightmare. Suddenly, a chilling announcement pierced through the intercom system delivered by the school secretary. Her voice quivered with fear as she relayed the message. The school was going into lockdown. Panic and uncertainty washed over me as her shaky voice emphasized that this was not a mere drill. In the blink of an eye, chaos erupted in the hallways. Students sprinted in all directions, textbooks and papers scattered like leaves in the wind. I was almost within reach of the art room, so I pushed my legs to move faster, hoping to find safety within its walls. When I finally reached the art room, it was a scene of frenzied activity. People were pouring into the room, and the teacher, after a moment of contemplation, decided to lock the door. We collectively extinguished the lights and huddled together in the back of the classroom, attempting to minimize our visibility through the window on the door. In that tense, suffocating darkness, we waited in eerie silence, our imaginations running wild with the possibilities of what might be happening outside. I willed myself to believe that this was just a precautionary measure, a false alarm. But doubt gnawed at the edges of my hope. 
The teacher received a notification on her phone, and her eyes widened as she read it. She shared the grim message with us in a hushed voice. There had been a murder in a neighborhood near the school, and the police suspected that the perpetrator might be seeking refuge nearby, possibly within the school itself. A chill crawled down my spine as the horrifying reality of the situation settled in. It felt like a scene from a horror movie, but there was no escaping the fact that it was all too real. A younger girl in the class was sobbing uncontrollably, her trembling body a testament to the terror that gripped us. Compassionate classmates gathered around her, offering solace amidst the uncertainty. The teacher, desperately trying to maintain a sense of order, asked me to retrieve a blanket from the supply closet. As I entered the spacious closet, filled with shelves on either side, I scanned for the blanket. But my eyes soon fell upon something far more sinister, a pair of dirty shoes lurking behind long pieces of fabric used for sewing projects. Dread pooled in my gut. Was this the murder suspect? I forced myself to stay composed, acting as if I hadn't seen anything unusual. Calmly, I retrieved the blanket, dimmed the closet lights, and gently shut the door behind me. Trembling, I handed the blanket to the distressed girl, then approached the teacher to whisper my shocking discovery. The teacher's eyes betrayed her own fear, but she remained silent. She reached for her phone, sending a message to the front desk to inform them of what I had found. An agonizing ten minutes of silence passed, tension hanging heavily in the air. Then, another message arrived. The teacher stood up, her expression grave, and informed us that we needed to exit the classroom calmly. We were to head to the middle school across the street until the situation was resolved. We followed her orders, walking briskly but steadily out of the classroom and toward the middle school. I couldn't shake the fear that the suspect might pursue us, but the closet door remained sealed behind us. We reached the middle school, where we waited for hours until our worried parents could finally come to retrieve us. That night, the news delivered a chilling update. The SWAT team had stormed the school, successfully capturing the suspect without any casualties. Yet, even as time passed and life returned to normal, I couldn't escape the dread that settled within me. Every time I ventured near that supply closet, a shiver would race down my spine, a haunting reminder of the malevolent presence that had lurked within those darkened shadows, an encounter that defied explanation and would forever haunt my memory. In my mid-twenties, I took up a job as a janitor at a local high school, desperate to save up for the car I had my heart set on. The gig was far from glamorous, but it paid the bills and allowed me to ease some of the financial burdens on my parents. My daily grind involved the usual janitorial duties, mopping, sweeping, cleaning windows, and the like. Four days a week, I toiled away in the shadows of the night, and the routine suited me just fine. However, one fateful day, I was summoned for a rare daytime shift due to a senseless prank orchestrated by a group of cocky seniors marking the end of their high school journey. These so-called senior pranks were nothing more than a source of amusement for them, but for us janitors, they were pure drudgery. To cut to the chase, this particular prank involved a massive food fight that left me and my fellow janitor, Todd, with the unenviable task of cleaning up the aftermath. Fortunately, most students were in their fifth period classes by the time we arrived, rendering the cafeteria eerily silent, save for the lingering remnants of chaos. As we busied ourselves picking up discarded food and debris, an eerie announcement crackled over the PA system. It was the school's principal, her voice trembling with fear and urgency. She declared a code red and instructed Todd and me to seek refuge in the closet, forbidding Oos from emerging until we received the all-clear signal. Huddled inside the cramped janitorial closet, I sent a quick text to my mother, informing her of the lockdown and the ominous uncertainty that shrouded the school. Minutes stretched into an agonizing eternity as we waited, our hearts pounding in the suffocating darkness. Then, abruptly, the cafeteria doors were violently flung open, and a chilling sight unfolded before our eyes. Hovering near the ceiling was a tall, ghastly woman, her pallid visage contorted into an unsettling grin. 
Gripped firmly in her hand, a gleaming knife glinted malevolently. She commenced an unholy procession around the cafeteria, her voice an eerie symphony of deranged utterances, ranging from macabre invitations to chilling threats. It was abundantly clear that this woman was a vessel of madness, possibly fueled by drugs or supernatural malevolence. As she advanced toward the closet, her steps stealthy and predatory, I grappled with the looming horror of our imminent encounter. In that cramped space, with limited options and a murderous lunatic bearing down upon us, I felt an icy grip of dread take hold. Desperation surged within me as I contemplated ways to defend ourselves. But in the confined quarters of the closet, any notion of resistance seemed futile. I clung to the faint hope that we might somehow escape her deadly grasp. Time crawled agonizingly as she drew nearer to the closet, her intent unmistakable. I steeled myself for a final desperate struggle, convinced that our fate was sealed. It seemed inevitable that she would breach our fragile sanctuary and bring her malevolence to bear upon us. But then, salvation arrived in a chorus of furious shouts emanating from the cafeteria's entrance. The cacophony of approaching police officers, guns drawn and ready, pierced the sinister atmosphere. Their voices commanded the intruder to surrender, and they ordered Todd and me to emerge cautiously. As the officers wrestled the deranged woman into submission, her resistance fierce and unhinged, the terror that had gripped us began to subside. It turned out that she had entered the school through the main entrance, assaulting both the principal and the front desk attendant before her rampage in the cafeteria. Though the incident had taken place in the mid-2000s when security measures were sorely lacking, the school eventually secured grants to improve its security infrastructure. But one chilling fact continues to haunt me to this day. The police had responded so swiftly because there happened to be a single patrol car in the vicinity. The school was nestled in the distant suburbs, far from the nearest police station. I shudder to think what might have unfolded had the police arrived just a minute later. Grateful that no one had suffered harm, I left my janitorial job behind, returning to school to pursue a career in technology. Fifteen years have passed since that horrifying day, and I've built a successful life for myself working at a prestigious design company. Yet, in the stillness of night, the memory of that dreadful incident occasionally invades my dreams. I share the tale sparingly with others, for it is a story best left to the shadows, where the horrors of that day continue to dwell 